Hey there YouTube, welcome back to Artichoke Dip. My name is Rob, Solo Tabletop Gamer. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about Dead Brain. And if this game will be a good game system for you. So before we get into the video, I'd like to say, if you like the video, please click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button. Click the little bell icon. Every time I upload a new video, you will hear about it. So I have to say, I have to give a special shout out to Kevin and all the guys over at Palladium Books. Uh, I went over, I did the interview, I met up with them guys, they're a great bunch of guys that um, made me feel very welcome there. And I have to admit, you know, I am just still grinning ear to ear. So Kevin gave me a lot of books to at that point to review and test out and talk to you guys about and to for some of you that are new to the hobby that um, you know you may be getting bored with the d20 system and looking to move on to different systems maybe you're looking for something new that at that point maybe palladium may have something in their category that you may enjoy and that's the scope of this video to get everybody a little bit more accustomed to Dead Rain, what Dead Rain is, and what Dead Rain isn't. So, first thing I'm going to get out of the way and talk about is, before reading this book, I thought I understood zombies, and I thought uh, putting zombies into my game and using those encounters, and after reading this book, I have to admit, I didn't know as much as I thought I did about zombies. This book goes into great detail about zombies, about how zombies hunt, about how zombies at that point will call out to other zombies to lure them in. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this. So it gives you an idea of Dead Rain and really helps paint a good picture of what the game system is about. So in the system Dead Rain, the zombies at that point, when they make that uh, noise, really what they're doing is they're calling out to other zombies to let them know, hey, there is a potential victim, or not a victim, we're going to say there is fresh meat right here. Those zombies will respond and begin to converge on that location. And they will begin to moan themselves, calling to more zombies. And that just keeps going on. And at that point, they begin to converge onto the location. The other thing that these zombies do that I really found really, really, uh, how do I put this, unique compared to other game systems is the fact that the zombies have the ability at night to be able to see the energy aura around the human beings which is called potential psychic energy and at night we glow like a torch to these things and they can see us for extremely long distances and at that point begin to move towards us to hunt us down and eat us eh, that kind of changes the way you look at RPG games Considering most RPG games, if you think about this, um, and I'm talking about from a perspective as mainly a fantasy game gamer, is the fact that you create your character. You are the hunter. You're either going through the dungeon or you're going through the wilderness to finish a quest, and whatever gets into your way, you're just going to hunt the thing down and kill it. Where, as of in this game, you are the hunted. And... At that point, you have to make some decisions that, well, really make you think differently in game terms than you normally would in other RPG systems. That makes this game very unique, I have to admit. Now, Kevin gave me a large stack of books, and when I was at that point 
um, finding space to put them on my shelf. The cover of this just really captured my eye and drew me in. And I sat down and started reading it. And this has dominated my entire week after work is reading Dead Rain. And I have just started playing a solo game through it. Um, now in the future, I will do a video of solo play to show you how I do it. But right now, my notes are extremely rough and the system is we're just gonna say a rough sketch at this point and what I mean by that is this is survival RPG playing unlike the other RPGs that I have played so it's not like I can go to my bookshelf here and drag out my random tables that I use for my fantasy gaming because a lot of them are not going to relate to the gaming in this book which is really 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 unique and I have to admit really has got my imagination going for the fact of the creative process because the game system gives you all the information to create a vast amount of NPCs and zombies so let's talk about the different types of zombies that are offered inside of this RPG system because as it categorizes the zombies, and it really, at that point, gives you a different perspective on zombies, more so than other game systems do. So the first zombie that they say is the most common is the sloucher, which the sloucher are the zombies that move around, they drag their feet, they walk like this, they make the moaning noise, they're slow moving, you're, as we would say, your common zombie. Now, the other zombie, which is, as the way they explain it in here, and it's like, ew, is the zombie that has had its center torso ripped off, its jaw probably ripped off, and it's now just a partial part of an abdomen, two arms and two hands clawing along with a head at that point, trying to rake at your ankles and your legs to be able to attack you. But nevertheless, it's still a zombie. And in this game system, zombies are very, very formidable foes. They are not easy to take a zombie down. I will tell you that. They are strong. And uh, it gets back to survival gaming versus normal fantasy roleplay gaming, which is very unique game system and I have to admit for me mainly playing a lot of fantasy RPGs this really opened up my eyes to different types of gaming out there and I know a lot of people enjoy other different types of gaming and I never really have strayed from that too much because fantasy is pretty much what I really enjoy but this right here really uh tell you what man it really opened up my eyes to a whole new world. So, you have your slouchers, you have your crawlers, then you have your fast attack zombies. These are the zombies that can run at very fast speeds. They are very strong. And sometimes, as you read the book and it explains to you, these zombies know how to work together to be able to, at that point, hunt down us humans using a fast attack zombie that zombie can at that point run down the humans beat them to the ground and hold them there until the other zombies can converge on them and feed particularly the ones that really do need to feed to be able to heal and you're going huh heal yeah heal because it explains in here with these zombies well, the zombies have to be able to absorb the PPE, or potential psychic energy, from its victims in order to reverse the rotting process, heal themselves, and at that point, prolong their lifespans as undead. I know it sounds weird, but these things can live Well, they're undead. The undead can stay around, we'll say, for an extreme extremely long time and that is unless 
a bullet goes to the head. It's the only thing that's going to kill them. Other than that, not much is. So you have your slouchers, your crawlers, your fast attackers. Then you have a small percentage of them, which are the flesh eaters. Not only do they enjoy feeding on the potential psychic energy of the victim, but they like tearing the flesh from the bone of the living and devouring fresh flesh. Then it goes to the thinkers. And the thinker zombies are the ones that... I'm going to use the example, you have a hundred zombies that have been beating on the steel door, knowing that there's living humans in there, but so far they're just stuck at that barrier. They can't get past the steel door and that brick wall to get inside. And then one of the zombies is like, huh, why don't we turn this doorknob? There you go. And uh, in the book it explains that there has been reports in the world of dead rain that some of these thinker zombies have even figured out how to use firearms. Now they're not the best shot in the world. They couldn't hit the broad side of the barn, which is good. But the fact that they could pick up a firearm and figure out how to use it is scary unto itself. Now comes to the mock zombie, which the mock zombie is kind of amusing. So what the mock zombie is, this is a somebody that was attacked and killed and but they still retain a large majority of their personality, their thoughts, their ambitions, their emotions and so on and so forth. Refusing to believe that they are undead. So at this point, you may have this rotting, shambling corpse coming up to you saying, Hey guys, look, you don't want to come down this way. There's a bunch of them odd dead things down there. Come with me. I'm going to show you how to get out of here and stay safe. Just just follow me. His parts are falling off of the, you know, the thing and you're like, wait a minute. So it gets to that point. This thing just wants to be amongst humans and wants to have that connection with a human again thinking I'm a good guy I'm one of you guys but ultimately sooner or later that overpowering urge to feed will surface so it's a slippery slope do you trust these things or do you just kill them right away and getting to the last zombie that they categorize in here which is the pattern zombie the pattern zombie being these zombies that remember a small, small snippet of the repetitive motion of everyday life. So you may go into a abandoned, we'll say, office building as you're at that point you're looking to salvage items to be able to use for your survival, whatever it may be. You may come across a zombie sitting at a desk clicking away at the keyboard staring at a blown out computer screen until you make a noise you disturb it it sees you're there and then that urge to feed takes over and you find a small amount of these as well in this world very very interesting how they categorize the zombies and it really does at that point get you thinking about Rather than a zombie being this animated dead corpse at that point, wandering aimlessly looking for a human to eat, there's actually different levels to them and thought. And to a certain extent, these things are able to organize, communicate, plan, and carry out attacks against the living, which adds more into the whole entire thing of where this RPG system is way different compared to most others in the fact that it's survival. It is a survival horror RPG game, truly, and the way that it's been set up really comes across that way and you can really feel it. Now, the other thing that they emphasize about the zombies in here is the fact that the zombies can smell humans. Now, if the humans are very active and they're sweating, at that point, it gives them 
bonuses to be able to track humans, which is, if you think about it, uh, a very dangerous thing for your character or characters because they may go into the city at that point to be able to find necessary supplies and it might be a humid day and they're sweating because they're running around and moving and trying to dodge zombies but a group of them maybe pick up on their scent and follow that scent back to their encampment only to later on that night go in and attack so those are other things that you have to think about as well which I get back to you're used to most RPG systems to where you are the hunter but in this game you are the hunted now the other cool thing that it explained about the, the zombies, and I have to get back to that, I found just so interesting was the fact that they can see PPE, or potential psychic energy, radiating off the auras of the living human beings at night. So they can hunt human beings. Now, this really does add a very unique perspective to your tabletop gaming for the fact that now you have to plan at this point all your rescue missions or your salvage missions or whatever else you're going to do during the daylight hours and hope that they go well because once that sun goes down you're going to want to be indoors and protected and out of the sight of the zombies because if not you're just a sitting duck and they are at that point going to converge on you and converge which is very cool as they explain converge and what converge means they explain the story of David and Rachel two teenagers that decided to go and eh, be a little adventurous inside the city only to find themselves being converged as you can see which is really cool so the characters that they have in here are really, really cool. I, I did read over the characters, and as they go through, they explain to you um, how do I put this? The different, basically, roles I'm going to say your characters play in this survival setting. So unlike playing a fighter or a cleric or a magic user or so on and so forth, in here you have several characters. The first one being the half-living, which is unique. That somebody that has been attacked by a zombie came extremely close to death, but at the last moment was able to come back. So now they've come back half-human and half-zombie. And... When I was reading that, it makes me wonder, where does the loyalty actually lie with the character? With the humans, or do they have sympathy for the undead? Because the fact that they're half undead, well, there's at that point some characteristics that they have that the undead view is one of their own hmm so now the other one is the hound master which is somebody who goes out and collects dogs that have well let's face it society has fallen the majority of the population is now the walking dead all of those dogs now have no masters and they're running rampant and at that point they gather these dogs up they take care of them they train them they breed them and they train them to hunt and take down zombies. So how master can be an extremely valuable character to have in your party, considering the fact that they may have, I don't know, eight Rottweilers trained to hunt and tear zombies to smithereens. So the other one is the Reaper. These guys are like the ultimate, how do we put this? outcast of society before society fell. These are the rough and tumbly motorcycle gang type. The people that were the outlaws and lived on the fringes of society to begin with. And now 
that society has fallen at this point. They have taken it upon themselves to go out on their bikes and search out zombies and kill them, liberating the humans that are left from a fate of being torn apart. And at that point, either they will join the ranks of the Reapers or move on to other human encampments. And then you have the Scrounger. The Scrounger says it all. They're, they're the Scrounger. They scrounge around for whatever they can use. Very resourceful characters. Now, you have, which I made for my character, which is the Shepherd of the Damned. And the Shepherd of the Damned is the one that, the way they see it, they are humanity's last line of hope. They are willing to put themselves in danger and go out and go into those cities to be able to find those last remaining few humans trapped, help them escape and get them to safety. And very, very cool uh, character. That's where I started with mine. And then of course you have the soldier. And as they explain in here, that the world has a new terror threat. And that terror threat is called the zombie apocalypse. And because of that, Remaining soldiers at that point scour the globe, still bringing the fight to the zombies and fighting these things head on with military might and ferocity. So, as you can see, you have a pretty wide array of characters to choose from to be able to implement into the game. Now, they also do give you what they call survivor occupational classes which these are people that you could either make a character out of, but the way I look at it, I would use them for NPCs. Characters that you could draw upon utilizing specific skills, whether that person before the fall of uh, society was, let's say, a mechanical engineer, or perhaps a medical doctor, or so on and so forth. And you could create that NPC, and at that point, put them into your party, to be able to achieve your specific objective. Now, moving on from there, if zombies weren't bad enough, because let's face it, you know, dead rain, the dead rains, but there's a little bit more to it than that that your characters are faced with in this world. The worst of them is what they call the death cults. So the death cults, you have what's called a death priest. Death priest generally always has about five zombies in his company. And to the mystery of a lot of people, under their command, where they can command the zombie to carry out simple commands, and but the zombies never attack them, which people don't understand. Now, death cult priest, the way they explain it, is that a god of death that has been around since the creation time. His first attempt to take over the world was the Black Plague, but it didn't succeed. But the second attempt did. And now the dead are inhibiting the world. And the only way to have salvation if you're living at that point is to bow to your knees and pay homage to this god of death. And of course, throwing a sacrifice to the zombies their way every now and then wouldn't hurt either. Whether it be innocent people that they have come across and brought into the cult promising to take care of them, food and clothe them and give them comfort, only to find that, well, they become the sacrifice or even a cult member himself willingly giving himself to a zombie to be torn apart. Now, moving on from the death cults, you got the retro savages to worry about. And these are the people who, the way they look at it, this is God's wrath upon the earth. From all the wickedness that men has done, this is what they deserved and what God has punished them with. These people are very resourceful. And like the Amish, they don't believe in technology. As a matter of fact, they view people out there that, at that point, hunt and kill zombies and still may use walkie-talkies and stuff like this. 
they are disillusioned. They are the sinners because they are still trying to live the way of the wicked. And they are resisting at that point as they look at it. God's gift to wipe the earth clean of all the sinners. And because of that, they should pay the ultimate price. To where as of point that they will capture these people, take them out and tie them up somewhere only to be, well, torn apart by a zombie later. And how they justify it in their minds is it's not murder because they didn't do anything. It was God's will that brought this. Very screwed up individuals. Now on top of dealing with death cults and zombies and retro savages, you also have all the wild animals to worry about. Bears and wild boar and roaming large packs of feral dogs and wolves that have, have now come back and converged in towards the city. Because let's face it, a bear, when it's hungry, it's not going to matter whether you're the walking dead or if you're living. It wants some food, so nobody's safe against a bear. Everything is on the menu. So it gives you some things to think about with this particular game system. And I really do like this game system. I have started playing solo and um, I'm refining my system a little bit because, like I said, this is completely different from all the tabletop games that I've played. It's a completely different outlook, the way that you play, for the fact if you think about it, large sounds like a shotgun blast will attract other zombies. Now you may be saying, well that ain't too bad. Well, the way that the game system works, 3D6 zombies will come in to investigate that noise. And then they will moan, which will at that point summon 3D6 more. And they will moan, which summons 3D6 more. And they moan, and which and it just keeps going on and on and on until you are just overrun with zombies. So it really does pose you some questions when you're playing this game. You come across the zombie. You have about four rounds to be able to silence or kill this thing before it calls out for reinforcements. So do you take out the shotgun and kill it? And risk, at that point, you're going to drop it quickly with a slug between the eyes. But at the same time, what else are you going to attract to you? Or do you take out the hatchet? and dispatch it quietly, but then you're getting into close proximity of this thing and opening yourself up to a fatal attack only to rise as one of the walking dead later. You can see where it's a very unique system. That's why little larva choke likes it. And the, moving on from there, it goes into other resources you can use, such as vehicles and transportation items, and going through cities, finding survival items. It also goes into a random tables for starting points for adventures, uh, searching corpses and items you will find, and a whole host of things to help you, at that point, bring this dead rain alive on your tabletop. Now, the combat system is, well, it's a palladium combat system, which goes back to AR, your armor rating, which would be like your armor class rating, and your SDC, which is your structural damage capacity, meaning how much damage your armor can take before, at that point, damage starts coming off your hit points, and ultimately, death happens. And it goes into a horror factor. Horror Factor being a death cult priest, let's say, arrives on the scene surrounded by, let's say, 10 zombies. And at that point, it's like a saving throw. You have to roll your 20 cider. If you meet that number or higher, your character at that point is able to keep his wits about him and will be able to follow through with his combat round. But if he fails, the sheer sight of the horror that is in front of him just at that point shakes him to his very foundation and he loses that round of combat or 
given some penalties to an initiative, depending on how you want to run your game. So character creation is very simple. Um, everything about this game is a very simple game to read through, pick up, and learn fairly quickly. I have to admit that I love the layout of the book, the way that they did it. And now this book is a little bit different laid out compared to most RPG books for the fact that about most RPG books you get to about the center of the book and it starts getting into its combat system and how that works. Whereas with this system you read through and you get a really good foundation understanding of zombies and the encounters in this world. You then go into the characters and the resources available to the characters and then towards the end of the book you learn about the combat system and how it works which is honestly uh, for the person just getting into this is really a cool way to lay out a book because it really does give them a good taste of the entire world before you inundate them with all of the combat matrices and rules that have to be thrown in there just to confuse the player a little bit more. Where it doesn't do that, it saves that to the end, and I really like that about this book. Now, as I said, I just started playing a solo adventure, um, and started making some random tables for myself. Now, before any of you ask, no, I'm not gonna post these tables, because they are very rough tables. It's like the rough sketch, I have just started it, and um, I'm still trying to get everything kind of figured out when it comes to fantasy RPG game, you know, no sweat. I've been playing these things since I've been 11, so I can go over here and drag my random table books out or whatever else and have it flow seamlessly. Whereas if with this game system, it's a completely different approach. So at that point, I have to make some random tables. I have to make some detailed stuff for the game system and like I said where this game system is different from a lot of other RPG systems out there is the fact that it's left up to you the player at that point to create your own not the player but the game master but now I'm talking from a solo enthusiast point of view it's up to us to create the zombies in here which is very simple to do they give you a template and show you how to do that Creating NPCs is very simple, and you at that point can populate your world pretty quickly. Within, I'm going to say about the time it would take you to play maybe two game sessions. So if you were to put about two hours of prep time into this, at that point you would have a pretty decent amount of NPCs and encounters to be able to go up against in try to survive in your world. Now as I said in how I am doing this and making a system for solo play for this at a later date when I feel very confident that it's smooth and seamless and very simple to understand I'm gonna put that out there share it do a video and show you how I do that but not yet it's not quite there yet so like I said I'm not going to post anything, so please don't ask. Don't mean to be a downer there, I just don't want to put um, anything out there to later on that I may take out and put something else in its place because it runs better for somebody to say, hey, well wait a minute, you use this or you use that or you use this, which is the reason why I do that. Alright, so moving on to my character. My character is an OCC, is the Shepherd of the Damned, his name is Victor Smith, and moving on from there, his strength is, he's a pretty strong dude, and he comes in with a plus five to help with physical damage, which works very well, because I decided to outfit him with a shotgun and an old battle axe that he uses. That has worked out very well and takes care of zombies pretty quick. But uh, not as quick as you think. <laughs> now, aside of that, I have to say, 
character creation here is very simple guys very simple game there's no magic in here nothing like that so when it comes to rolling your character up it's extremely basic and there's really not much more I can say about the character creation other than it's very very basic it's very simple very easy to whip out a character pretty quick and I like that and well in this game of survival that's always a good thing because I got a feeling with this game I'm gonna lose quite a few characters before <laughs> I probably get through this scenario so we'll see how that works out right now I'm using one character to get the game system and understand it and uh, see how that rolls because I have to read through the game system, understand the rules, go back through it, and then figure out how to set that up for solo play, go back through that, play through what I did, re-edit all the notes, add some things, take some things out, go back through that, play that again, until it's like, okay, this is running really smooth, this is running really well, and it's really fun. So that's where I'm at with it. but. I think that's where I'm going to leave this video off for Dead Rain. And for those of you guys out there that are on the fence about mm, should I pick up Dead Rain, should I not pick up Dead Rain, I hope this answers some of your questions about it, particularly for the solo enthusiasts as to whether you want to get this and put it on your table. I know for me, uh, before I had the uh, meeting with Kevin over there at Palladium and did the interview, I was getting ready to pick this book up and I was going to order it from Amazon and at that point Kevin gave it to me and said well here check this one out and I'll tell you what either way I would have been extremely happy with it and I am very very happy with the game system I thank Kevin a lot for giving me this book and saying here check this out and give it a go and see what you think and I have to say I really do enjoy it and I have a lot more game systems coming that I'm going to be talking about a couple of it's going to be Nightbane the updated version of Beyond the Supernatural which I'm really interested to get into that one and many more so you look forward to more videos coming out and moving forward with there he did give me a lot of stuff for Palladium to play with and explore and I am very excited about that. Alright folks, I think this is where the video is going to uh, leave off right here. If you liked the video, please click the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Click the bell icon and you're going to be notified every time I upload a new video. And with that, this is Artichoke Dip, signing off.